Welcome back. I'm Josh McConnell and this is your sports update. Team Canada's men's hockey team played their first game today, debuting against Norway. Canada sealed the deal with a score of 3-1. to one. Drew Doughty, Jamie Benn and Shea Weber all put the puck in the net. Meanwhile, Carey Price was between the pipes, stopping 19 shots. In other Olympic news, a bobsled worker has been injured today by a racing sled in Sochi. The worker was doing maintenance on the track before a day of training when a manned test sled was sent down to check the conditions. Other workers got out of the way, but one was hit, suffering two broken legs. He was airlifted to hospital. Patrick, Te Patrick Chan took to the ice today in the men's short program. Chan is now sitting in second in the standings just behind Japan with a long program taking place tomorrow at 10 a.m. Russian figure skater Yevgeny Plashenko pulled out of the men's short program today due to major pain in his back. Plashenko says this was going to be his final event and he is now retiring from amateur skating. This was his fourth Winter Olympics. And a quick update on that hot weather in Sochi. It was 17 degrees today. So warm in fact that Bobby Brown of Team USA did his ski slope style in a t-shirt. This is the Winter, Winter Olympics, right? Back on Humber campus, the Humber Hawks volleyball teams were both busy last night with the men's and women's teams wrapping up their regular season, both playing Mohawk College. The men's team beat the Hawks 3 to none, which bumped up their final season record to 16 and 2. But the big story is the women's team who also beat the Hawks 3 to nothing. This win gave the team a flawless season of 18 and 0. Great job, Hawks. The Toronto Raptors finished the first half of their season last night with a big win against the Atlanta Hawks. The Raps had a slow start at the ACC while Atlanta was on the attack. One of the biggest problems was the Raptors just could not score from the three-point range. But the team finally rallied with DeMar DeRozan scoring 14 of his 31 points in the third quarter alone. The Raps took the lead and won 104-83. The Raptors are now taking a rest for the All-Star break happening this weekend. And that's your sports update. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Josh. Now for your five-day forecast, we go outside to Katerina. Well, I have some good news for those of us who aren't heading to Cuba for Reading Week. That nasty storm that's battering Philly, Boston, and New York is actually going to head east of us towards the Maritimes. Here in the GTA, it'll be a little nicer. Today, we'll reach a high of minus 3, and we've already hit our low this morning of minus 15. But tonight, we'll dip down to minus 8. Tomorrow, we'll hit a balmy high of minus 1 and a low of minus 8. Saturday, a high of minus 6, low of minus 13. Sunday, a high of minus 9 and a low of minus 14. And Monday, we'll bring a sprinkling of fresh powder for the skiing enthusiasts and a high of minus 2 and a low of minus 14. Well, I'm excited that it's starting to feel a lot more like spring here in the GTA. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Katarina. Turning now to national and international news, the two teens charged in a Trois-Rivières murder allegedly planned to kill the victim's mother and several police officers. The boys also planned for one of them to kill the other after they murdered the three victims. Both teens were charged with three counts of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Neither the victims or the suspects can be named under the Youth Criminal Justice Act. The Crown has asked for the suspects to be sentenced as adults if they are convicted. Two men wanted in the murder of a 54-year-old Canadian missionary have been found dead in Belize. Brian Townsend was abducted from his home in Belize on Christmas Eve and his body was found two days later in Guatemala. The two possible suspects are believed to have lived next door to Townsend. Rolito Bologna was shot to death this week and his brother Marlon was found in January with neck and chest wounds. It's not known whether the murders were executed out of revenge. Soon, homes in the States will be receiving their cable entertainment from one dominant provider. Cable TV company Comcast Corporation has agreed to purchase Time Warner Cable Inc. for over $45 billion in stock. The deal to amalgamate the two top cable TV companies in the States will make Comcast a front-runner in providing entertainment to U.S. homes. Pending approval, the deal will close by the end of this year. About 400 people have been killed in Syria's largest city this month. In the most recent attack, at least 51 people died in Aleppo yesterday in airstrikes and bombings by the Syrian government. The attacks are a method to gain control of the districts that were taken by rebels in mid-2012. 65 accused militants in Afghanistan have been released from a former U.S. prison. Afghan President Hamid Karzai took over prison 
took over the prison several weeks ago from U.S. troops. Karzai ordered the release of the prisoners against protests from the American military. The U.S. military says the men are Taliban fighters who will likely return to the battlefield to kill Afghan forces. After the break, we'll get the latest in entertainment from Julia Grabowska. A Drake Macklemore feud may be brewing, Canadian pop stars write Olympic songs, and where are the believers in Indianapolis? That's all coming up in your entertainment update after the break. <laughs> 